Now we have an amazing guest on the couch with us today, and it's all about being very versatile, having longevity and sustainable growth in the industry, talking about the movie industry in Nigeria, and of course, using every single talent you have every single minute of the year. We're talking about Mr. Saeed Mohammed, popularly known as Funky Malam. Now he's a Nigerian singer, MC, comic actor, and he's best known for playing the role of Hausa Muslim scholar in many popular TV series, soap operas, and movies. Now he's a graduate of mass communications, but then he's metamorphosed into that stereotype and owned it. He's begun to interpret his Hausa roles with this discerning dexterity that has endeared him to the hearts of Nigerians. It's great to have you on the couch with us once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. All right. Pleasure so, with you. so sometimes I find it hard to connect some of the roles uh, we see you play with who you actually are because um, you're just the, the most fun guy ever. <laughs> um, I, I have to appreciate you for coming on air to talk to us. Yeah. Again, now we had a quite an interesting discussion when uh, Eagle Wings yeah. came out the last time. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the response to that movie after it came out. Yeah, it has a very massive response, and um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people, you know, couldn't even believe that it was shot in Nigeria. You yeah. know, kind of uh, because of the picture quality, yeah. um, so many other things. You know, actually, um, mm. and now uh, uh, it's a movie that I'm so proud of because there is no single you know, expatriate, you know, yeah. I mean, there's no white man, you know, yeah. either directing, producing mm. or whatever. It's all home-based, you know, mm. material used, kind mm. of, you mm. know, both human and, and whatever resources. Yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, it has gone far, so we're looking for, it's going to be on Netflix very soon at the same time, yeah. All right. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Now, when, when you came here last, the, the movie hadn't exactly come out yet. Yes, yes. And there were so many things you couldn't really tell us, so many secrets that you were keeping <laughs> to your chest, uh, you know, especially about, you know, uh, how uh, s some of the locations were sourced. Yeah. Um, so now we're seeing real fighter jets. We're seeing real soldiers working mm -hmm. in this, on this particular set. Yeah. Um, what sort of training do you have to go through? For that particular movie. Yeah, because uh, most of the this and the, the fighting were, you know, um, themed uh, in the Listen Air Force uh, Regiment okay. in Kaduna. So um, we used the training regiment and uh, mm. everything was being shot there. And most of the, um, we used most of their soldiers. Some of okay. the expatriates even had to come from Sambisa, you know, so as, wow. so as to be able to interpret yeah. actually what, what has been going on over there. And um, like I told you, some of the shots that you see, we are real shot because, um, you know, um, the crisis So Eagle's was, Wings was actually real shots, no? It, yeah, some of the shots were real wow. shots, you know, kind of. And then, like the shot you see from the chopper, yeah. you, know, you know, on the terrorist kind of them. Though, yeah. I, I didn't know how, what kind of software they use doing it, but wow. it was a real shot because the, direct, the director wanted to, you know, kind of... Uh, do it during post-production and mm. I say no that they should put cameraman inside mm. and let's take the shot while they're shooting down kind of wow. so they did that and then how we now appeared on that and they see the bullet chasing us you know yeah. with the whole doors and everything I didn't know how they achieved that wow wow mm. wow but but were you ever actually worried about it because it must have taken quite a while to shoot yeah this particular movie were you ever worried about the outcome, or were you really confident from day one? Oh, no, actually, it was very stressful. I mean, even just to, sh to shoot a scene, yeah. actually, you know, drain you up because uh, you you had to take off when the yeah. soldiers are coming, mm -hmm. you run, you know, and it was kind of, it dries, it, 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 it was almost hammer time period. Yeah. So the, the bushes were kind of dried and dusty, so wow. you were inhaling dust, and then you're running all the things that are kind of, you know, tricking oh. your skin and so on and so Goodness. forth and then, then you just have to bear it because that wow. is how it is wow. and then it has to be kind of made believe mm. so and uh, yeah. sometimes we are not even allowed to sleep we have to shoot till the next day and we Goodness. have to go and kind of rest with them because they want to <laughs> see that stress in your, in eye. your eyes yeah, and everything okay so we're gonna move from that really stressful production yeah. on to something more light-hearted mm -hmm. uh, now one of the uh, newer works you've been putting together yeah. you want to share with us mm. well I... oh it's still secret 
Uh, yeah, it's a little bit secret because uh, we, <laughs> this is uh, has something that has to do with Netflix uh, oh. direct. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, which is the black. Though I've done so many other ones, like okay, uh, okay. we just shot and uh, shot down Lagos. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I shot down Lagos. Uh, I played uh, and the head of the terrorist kind oh of goodness <laughs> me that bad guy role yeah the bad guy role mm -hmm. but then uh i wasn't as brutal uh, as the other movie but then yeah. i command and then my son was more brutal than me in the movie kind of thing no okay. but then uh, mm -hmm. it, it's all kind of things that i want to come to put an end because i inherited that position from my father okay. and uh, my son wanted to become even more than me mm. but all I wanted is to put stop to it so that he can have a good life mm. because mm. it's a movie that actually you know trying to tell people that look terrorism or whatever it is mm. you know actually does not give you a good life and does not you know you know portray your family mm. as successful in future so the best thing is that if you find yourself enjoying it please mm. try to put an end to it so that your children or whatever you have in yeah. future will be able to have a good life otherwise they'll be they yeah. will remain their their whole life with is going to be in the jungle mm. yeah because mm. definitely they cannot you know what yeah. you know what the fact that you're extremely versatile is yeah. just it's just so amazing because from there, from doing the bad guy roles, you yeah. switch over to the being comedy. a comedian. <laughs> when you play all those bad guy roles, how do you connect the funny side of all these things? Yeah, when I have to come across a script and I find out that I'm to play a bad guy, yeah. all I do before I get to the location yeah. is that to make sure that everything about, you know, comedy is out of me completely. Mm. Yeah, because mm. you just have to kind of... Uh, sink into that character mm, because yeah. you are portraying some certain bad people so you've seen them you know how they are and then you know when you uh, you personally when when you are not in a in a good mood you know how you react to people sure, so you have sure. to bring all these things together into you mm. and they, because it's not playtime and okay. you have to make it believable wow yeah wow, wow then somehow you suck in all the funny uh, anecdotes you can find and then channel that onto your stand-up and no, 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 when it comes to the comedy, <laughs> definitely, you know, it's a lighter mood yeah, kind of. And yeah, then yeah. If, if you can make yourself at least smile, mm. then you know what you're, what you're doing is not funny. You know what? Let's take a clip and see exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, what exactly were you looking at, sir? Something must kill a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so now there's something you said while we were watching that sometimes some of the scripts are not exactly that funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. and you have to put your own spin on it. Yeah, definitely. Most dialogue you read on this in the script, you know, yeah. are, are not funny. So mm. you you have to make them funny. Yeah. So that's why we are allowed to ad lib. Mm. Yeah, mm. but uh, not to overact at the same time. Of course. Yeah. So the overacting part, I feel, has affected a lot of Nigerian actors. Uh, yeah. Uh, but Absolutely. then again, maybe from the origins of theatre, maybe they drag mm -hmm. that in a yeah. lot more to, to screen. Yeah, I think some some people are not gel, are not just uh, telling themselves the truth when it comes okay. to acting. Okay. You know, you when it comes to acting, you have to bear in mind, you have to listen to your director, mm -hmm. you have to, you know, what you uh, you have to read your script properly okay. and know what you have been expected of you know so you have to interpret yeah. to the core you know mm -hmm. so you trying to overact it and make it so boring and all these things yeah. that's not professional man so you have to look at so many other things because comedy is supposed to be light not yeah. too hard yeah. so yeah. but then some people try to make it you know to force them if you're not a comedian you're not a comedian but well, it's just that's why they try to force it so that might end up overacting you know what? I'm definitely going to be taking some lessons from you <laughs> during this quick break. We have to take a quick one, but we will be back. Wake up, Nigeria. Continues. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us.